you and welcome not to the lab but to the landing because for start the lab has a secret project in it I'm working on that's another video and that's a restoration and very few people have seen what that is but I think you'll like it when you find out what it is and if I ever get it working uh, we are actually on the landing uh, because downstairs is the pink fluffy monk is enjoying a nice drink as I've been enjoying a nice drink tonight but I thought I'd show you this thing which we found today at Chester Street Market for a one English pound. At the time, very much dead. It's not anymore. I fixed it. What is it? Well, you probably all recognise these things, being of our lives. It is a card reader uh, for authorising transactions via credit or debit card. And this particular one has the hole at the bottom. You can swipe it and it prints receipts out. This particular one appears to have been used on coaches. So put the card in, put the details in, put the card in, and then it prints out your ticket. Uh, it's looking at the menus on it, that's what it's been set up to do. So when we got it, uh, it has a power port on this side. This power port in there was completely loose and flopping around. Uh, when I went in to the battery compartment there, there's a little PCB at the back to which this is mounted. That's the solder joints had failed, so all I did was uh, go in, redo the solder joints. It's surface mounted. So, but luckily the pads took the solder and I was able to remount it. And uh, it worked and it got power. It's now working on the battery because it's got a little bit of charge in it, so hopefully enough to do this video. Let's have a look at it physically. Obviously on the bottom you've got the keypad which lights up, it has all nice backlights as you will know. Uh, menu button, selector button, power button, display which also is backlit. Uh, bottom you've got the slot for the card to go in and the battery thing. This is actually a wireless one. This works on the mobile phone network to authorise cards, so it can be used in like coaches, as I've already said. Uh, right, on the side, not much. On this side, the power port, and on the back, you've got connectors here. I think that's for the aerial, and that'll be for data connection. And on the top, you've got a thermal printer, which opens unusually, like this. There we go, and there's some paper. Uh, not got to test that because can't get in the menus far enough to test it. There's your receipt, sir. Slightly mangled. But anyway, yes, this is a what's it called? A Cyron Paysal MPT. So, anyway, on the bottom, not got much you got to. Uh, Two little pins for docking it to a docking station which apparently came with it. I was able to use a multi adapter and uh, one of my many little plugs to get power to this. Uh, apart from that, not much on the outside. Let's give it some power shall we? Press the on button. And we'll see what it does. Boots very quickly. I have, you may have seen some little bits pop up there before this main screen. And I've slowed that down on another video and it's just, uh, it just says initialising this, that and other. Uh, right, TMS call is recommended. I don't know what the TMS call is, so there we go. Yes, call TMS. No help desk. Clear. Continue. Well, as this has no, uh, obviously you can't get on the GPRS network with it because it's not got a valid SIM card. Which just bring, bring me to another point. I am neglectful. I forgot about this little door here. If I pull this door, you have inside what I assume to be a uh, Wi-Fi or uh, GPOS aerial and a SIM card which is left in it plonkers it is an O2 SIM card I just want to leave that in there but I very much doubt it's usable even if it could it's not going to be registered with the network anymore so can't use it right so if we press clear to bypass calling this it then goes to that one and then lights up the screen nicely like that. Merchant, initialising modem, please wait. Now obviously we can't, oh here we go, 
initializing excess 200 GPRS please wait now obviously we can't uh, get too far into this because it's got passwords and uh, yes yeah, it's, it's pointless because it's not going to authorize bugger all if we can find connecting to the GPRS network it's got two levels of security it's got uh, the user security and supervisor uh, pin if we can find the supervisor pin, which I've not been able to uh, find so far because it's not the obvious ones, uh, we could probably have some fun with this, but at the moment. <coughs> now, it does take a few moments to get past this screen. And then these buttons will bypass it. Well, the off, off button probably would, but none of the usual buttons. So we may have to. Uh, Cut this bit out, depending on how much longer it takes. La di da di da di da. Connecting, connecting, connecting. My phone has enough trouble getting on the network from here because it's I'm in a bit of a valley and it's a bit of a blind spot for the network. Okay, failed to connect. No shite. Right. No to cancel. Good. Beep, 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 beep. Modem install failed. Yes to continue. Yes, go on then. Right, and there we go. That's where we get to. Enter driver badge number. So it's always stuff up and it beeps that, you know, yeah. So it's obviously been used in the coaches. So, but, uh, six digit number. Tried loads of random ones and the obvious ones. Eh, eh. Invalid driver number. Try again. So that's about. If I press no, we get to uh, driver setup, supervisor check. It's only got a four digit pin, but I've tried all the obvious ones, you know, one, two, three, four. And no invalid pin, try again. So, I'm not giving it away easily. Uh, I did find a way to get to a menu. Oh, that's when you switch on. There are some other options. If I just switch it off, I press the menu button and that one at the same time. Recovery was requested. Yes, call TMS. No, hold desk, clear, continue. Hmm, let's do the modem thing again. Uh, I think it went the wrong way. Let's try again. Switching down. Right. Here it goes. Okay, it started up. Yes, call the desk. Cool, cool, cool. Initializing modem. Please wait for the modem to install. Modem. Okay. Attaching GSM. This is where I may have to edit it. That's uh, when it's not doing... Uh, Everyday user stuff, the battery backup doesn't, sorry, the backing light doesn't tend to appear. That's just for when the customers are around and using it actively. Uh, so, connecting, this may take a while, so I may have to edit this bar. I may have to edit this. I may have to edit this. Tell I've had a drink. And I'll be right back. Right, here we are. And. Uh, could not join network. Amazing that. Hmm. Yes, to retry no to exit. No. And we get another little menu. Your dial TMS. Comms parameters. Uh, run on zip. I've tried that one. It doesn't do bug roll. It just says done. That's it. Reboots. And rejoin network. So, the only one I haven't tried is number two. Ooh. GSM phone number. So I'll try. I haven't been in these menus. Enter first number. 019. Ooh. Hmm. Hmm. May have to blow this bit. There it goes. GPRS address. Let's have a look. A quickie work. Okay. No to cancel. So we can get into that menu. Ah. Load stuff there. More stuff. GPRS password. Mm. I wonder. Let's have a look. Enter password. Show it. <sighs> what else have we got? G data bearer. <laughs> Sounds like you've got a slave working for you, doesn't it? Uh, GSM or GPRS. So, yes, works on the mobile network. Now, why have I got this thing? Well, you know that this is. Let's just get out of here. No, 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 don't want you. Let's keep it shut down. And I'll just boot it up so it's got something pretty to look at. 
uh, continue clear. There you go. That's something pretty to look at while I do that. Look, I'm sitting aside of you. You may notice. So why have we got this thing? Well, you know that this is a trial. Well, I, what I call, well, officially called, but I call a transiting technology. This is only going to be out for a short period of time, relatively. Uh, it's a technology that's already been superseded now. So these machines are now <coughs> on their way out, and they will just be scrapped, binned. So I think it's important to, if you're documenting computer history, to have an example of this sort of technology in your collection. And for a pound, working. Yeah, 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 yeah. No. Yeah, no need to beep up me that much. Ish. There we go. So, <coughs> as a technology, <coughs> excuse me, it's not going to get a long lifespan and they're quickly going to quickly disappear after that period as they belong to companies and they're just going to scrap them. They don't really care. So, if you're documenting computer history, yeah, it's a nice thing to have in your collection. As I'm sure EPROM 9, uh, will appreciate because he likes this sort of stuff. Next thing you know, I'm going to get one of those bloody laser guns he's got that does all your supermarket stock control. They're cool, he's got one of them. I'm going to get one of them next. But yes, this is a good little piece of kit. It's solid and you can throw it around. I'm not going to hurt it. It's going to last. So, thought that might be something different of interest at all from people. So, there you go. Thank you very much. You need to quit being dirty. You're a dirty boy. <laughs>